The opening shot of Francis Ford Coppola's 1972 classic is a close-up of Bonacera, who utters a now famous line, I believe in America. America has made my fortune. The camera then opens up and reveals the world where the story is going to unfold. The seductive nature of this opening shot lures us into the mystery of this world, the world of the Godfather. Bonacera's opening monologue forms a significant part of the elaborate opening sequence, which is intercut with Connie and Carlos wedding outside. This is a sequence where most of the themes are established. First, it establishes the perspective. We are going to witness this world from inside. We see the nervous immigrants seeking justice, an Italian mob wedding, food, family, friends. The mafia is presented as everyday people, not as the scum of the society like in previous mob films. The family ties are established with as much importance as the world of the mafia itself. This is where we understand that despite the nature of his world, The Godfather inherently is a family drama. Coppola uses contradiction to establish the complex nature of the family business and to shape our understanding towards these men. Through Bonacera, we understand that the Corleone family is on the side of justice, but the way of providing that justice paints them unlawful. A sense of respect is evident on Kay's face when Michael explains to her why Tom Hagen has a different last name, but that feeling diminishes when she gets to know the importance of Luca Brasi. The two significant shots from the opening sequence show Vito gazing out through his office window at the family celebration. These shots links the exterior to the interior, balancing for Vito his want and need. leisure and obligation family and business his commitment to his work is the sole reason for the opulence outside the acquisition of wealth and happiness involves act of violence the key aspect to notice in this opening sequence is that the violence performed on vito's behalf isn't something that we are asked to judge instead we focus more on how the family business keeps vito away from the business of family none of these sentiments are spoken out loud not even in the form of exposition this is all in subtext And Coppola presents the subtext through masterful staging and blocking. An extraordinary emphasis is put on set design, lighting, and camera placement. Notice the scene when Tom is being held captive. The opening shot is a grotesque wide-angle close-up of Solosso bathed in orange light. He walks across the camera to present Tom in a half-lit mid-shot. There is no establishing shot. This is because we have to share Tom's uncertainty to feel sympathetic to his situation. Another scene where Michael realizes that the safety of his father and family depends upon the assassination of both Solosso and McCluskey, he takes control of the meeting and the scene by taking a seat in the center of the frame. During the entire assassination sequence, Michael is aware of the fact that he is an actor performing a script. So when he comes out of the bathroom, we expect him to carry out Clemenza's instructions, but Coppola plays with audience's expectations. Michael strays from the script. He comes out and looks Solosso in the eye. There's a moment of hesitation. He was supposed to come out blasting. Instead, he walks to the table and sits down. The conversation continues. The action is suspended, strengthening our desire to reach the intended conclusion. But Michael's introspection reads hesitation, and as we worry that he might lack the courage to pull the trigger, we want Michael to remember Clemenza's words because we really want him to get away with the murders. But Michael's diversion from the given instructions is how Coppola makes us root for Michael. He must do that because the main theme of the film requires that we root for Michael, and that theme is the theme of succession. One of the most significant decisions Coppola took while adapting the novel was to focus less on Vito and more on Michael. And the way Michael's character arc is presented is a stuff of genius from both Coppola and the cinematographer Gordon Willis. When we meet Michael for the first time, he is presented in a bright sunlight. He enters his sister's wedding like an outsider. A sense of naive innocence is evident when he assures Kay, "That's my family, Kay. It's not me." Then he stays away from much of the action. And when he does come back, he is treated as a kid. Tom advises Sunny not to get him involved too directly. He is given meager jobs like answering phone calls. It is done intentionally because Michael needs to gain the trust of his family, which in turn means ours as well. And that moment arrives when Michael saves his father in the hospital. The first character change occurs when he assures his father, "I'm with you now." He takes control of the situation. He gains our trust with his shrewd handling of a potentially fatal situation. Later in the house, he has to assume even bigger responsibility. The weight of the decision reflects in the camera movement. As Michael explains his intentions, the camera slowly tracks in on him from a wide to a mid shot, begging everyone to take the boy seriously. 
Because we have witnessed his actions in the hospital, we know he means business while everyone else laughs. Then I'll kill them both. <laughs> his time in Italy keeps him away from the ugly war in New York. He marries Apollonia partly out of guilt. The guilt of not staying true to his words he assured gave it. That's my family, Kate. It's not me. But the news of Sunny's death and witnessing his wife's murder hardens him. The devastation of losing his loved one forces him to grow old quickly. He understands the importance of keeping his lineage going. So when he proposes Kate for marriage, it is more out of business reasons than out of love. Because what's important is that we have each other, that we have a life together. that we have children our children this is the point where michael starts to become central to the family coppola saw the colleone family as something that would belong to a shakespearean universe a king with three sons inheriting part of his qualities sunny inherited the robust strength fredo inherited the sweetness of a young mind while michael inherited the cunning intelligence and it is his intelligence that fuels the rest of the film it is interesting to observe how much of the godfather takes place indoors in softly lit rooms to mask the business of the family the style grants the family a sense of visual safety from the outside world which is noticeably missing when the movie takes place outside because of his knowledge of the danger of the outside world michael prefers to take care of the family business indoors and when he would choreograph the murder of his enemies later in the film all but one will be carried out indoors places others would also assume to be safe but for michael to carry out such a big act of violence he has to assume the ultimate position there has to be an exchange of power from the old to the new and that happens in this beautiful and pivotal scene which is also my favorite the exchange of power happens over 12 over the shoulder shots last of which becomes a lengthy two shot the scene plays out at three levels at textual level it presents vito alerting michael of his possible assassination not that meeting you be assassinated this is a father discussing the family business with his son At the second level it is subtext and the subtext is personal. At first Vito's mind seems to be wandering with multiple thoughts. I like to drink wine more than I used to. Your wife and children are happy with them. I hope you don't mind why I I keep going over this Pasini business. I spend my life trying not to be careless. I want you to arrange to have a telephone man check all the calls that go. Me not him. When Michael assures his concerned father with the line, I'll handle it. I told you I can handle it. I'll handle it. Vito gets his only chance in the movie to exercise his eloquent soliloquy. I knew that Santino was going to have to go through all this. An extraneously presented inner Fredo. monologue provides Vito a well-deserved moment of clarity. A moment where Fredo. a father can apologize to his son for an unintended fate. I never I never wanted this for you. I worked my whole life I don't apologize to take care of my family. While all of this is happening, Coppola guides us towards the third level where the theme of succession takes place. Michael's assurance to his father is cued with Nino Rota's Godfather theme. This timely yet subtle introduction of the musical piece marks the exit of the old Godfather. and the arrival of the new Vito's death allows Michael to execute a plan he was patiently waiting for the day he becomes godfather for his niece is planned to coincide with the day he executes his enemies so brilliant is the execution of coppola's filmmaking that we are invited to examine our initial decision to back michael to become the successor of the family his way of using his alibi to carry out the violence of towering proportion dents our respect towards michael and this is the moment where the film's metaphor of american capitalism reaches its zenith the baptism sequence shows that to be successful michael has to pay a price and the price is to trade soul for success that's a sacrifice michael is willing to make an apt commentary on the american capitalist ideology where ruthlessness in the marketplace has become a necessary credential for success this ruthlessness is on display again when he decides to execute two more people tessio and his sister's husband carlo If there was ever any doubt about his cold-blooded approach towards the family business, this is the sequence where it is eradicated. There are no sentiments involved. Michael had learned this lesson quite early. It's not personal. Son. It's strictly business. There's an old saying, you reap what you sow. 
The Sicilian seeds of violence sowed in the American soil comes back to haunt Michael at the very end of the film. When Michael lies to Kay about his involvement in Carlo's murder, it feels like a selfish act to keep his image in her eyes intact, rather than keeping his family unaffected by the business. The family that Vito always kept inside despite his commitment towards the business is abandoned by Michael when he shuts the door on his wife. For the family business to flourish, Michael sacrifices his ties with his family. From a naive, innocent and a stoic war hero, he ends up becoming a cold, heartless and a vengeful mafia lord. The tragedy for Michael is that he couldn't avoid the inevitable doom of succession, despite his prior knowledge. The Godfather glides along his three-hour runtime. There's not a single moment where the film loses its grip. There's not a single unnecessary scene, not one unnecessary shot. You can never say you understood every character's thought process because so much of the conversation happens just by a look. Even almost half the century later, The Godfather still resonates with people. Because we relate to the troubled Bonasera in need of a father figure to get him justice. We share the same family values Vito advocates. Because a man who doesn't spend time with his family can never be a real man. Like Michael, we also have shared the same kind of relationship with our father. We also value loyalty as much as Michael does. But don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. Like the Corleone family, we all have grown up in a patriarchal hierarchy. And for better or worse, we all have to make sacrifices for our family. All of these characters reside in us. They all represent part of us. They all hold a mirror in front of us, revealing a truth that we thought was buried in our conscience. The Godfather offers you a chance to explore your family values against your moral values. And to be honest, it is an offer you shouldn't refuse. That I cannot do. Thank you.